Hello everyone, do you think this tiny DJI Osmo Pocket 3 can capture amazing photos and time lapses of the stars? Let's discover this together inside of this video. But first, let's roll the intro. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Luke Benoit Halford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. If you've seen a previous video about the DJI Pocket 2, you might think that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 would have much better photos and time lapses when taking pictures of the stars. But DJI did a weird decision when they decided to reduce the shutter speed to 1 second inside of this camera instead of 8 seconds that we had inside of the DJI Pocket 2. So I'm not sure if the new bigger sensor is going to be enough to compensate for this. So we're going to have to test it out and see the results inside of this video. I'm actually going to do some comparison shots at the end of the video, so definitely stay tuned for those. If you've seen my previous astrophotography videos, you probably know it's very important to check your weather conditions before coming out to take the shots. I'm a little bit messed up tonight because I forgot to check the weather when I arrived today. So when we got here around 8 p.m., it was totally covered with clouds. We couldn't take any pictures of the stars, so they decided to go and get some sleep, and it's now 2.30 a.m., and we should have mostly clear skies right here. But now if we go inside of photo pills, we're gonna realize there's another issue right here. And it's actually that the moon is almost full brightness. The good news is the moon is gonna disappear behind some mountains in probably half an hour to an hour. So we're still gonna have about two, three hours to take some shots of these stars before the sunrise. So hopefully we can get that done in the time that we have left. The issue of having a moon that's too bright is just that we won't see as well the stars, but the good news is actually we're gonna see better the mountain that's right behind me. So that's actually some positive things. Okay, so it's finally time to take our first picture here. So we're gonna come here and open the DJ Osmo Pocket. I still have so much fun flipping it in to open it up. And we're gonna come inside of our photo mode. So instead of taking time lapse, we're gonna test our settings using the photo mode and then go use those settings inside of the time lapse. And what is very important here is actually that we're gonna use the manual settings. So we're gonna come right here, we're gonna swipe from the side, and we're gonna make sure that we select the pro mode here so we can use manual settings. We're gonna make sure that format, we have RAW plus JPEG. You want to RAW pictures because you want to make sure you're gonna be able to edit it afterwards. For the focus mode, we're gonna put it on single because we're gonna try and find and focus on a star. And that's what we're gonna to use to make sure that all the shots afterwards also have the same focus mode. Then we're gonna leave the white balance on auto. It usually works pretty well. And because it's a RAW photo, we can change it afterwards. So that's not too stressful. Finally, we're gonna come on the exposure right here and we're gonna go inside of manual. So we're gonna scroll down here to the very end until we have our match shutter speed of one second. I would love to have longer than that. It would be better if we had 10, 15 seconds, uh, but we're kind of stuck with this inside of the camera. We're also gonna bring the ISO to the max ISO here, which is 6400. Framing the shot can be a little bit hard because we don't really see on the screen what's happening too well, but we kind of wanna go here, find somewhere we have a bright star inside of the shot, and we're simply gonna tap to focus on it. So hopefully it looks like it did focus on the stars. I'm actually lucky here because on the mountain there's some lights and that's gonna work for our focus. And we're gonna take our shot right here. So we're gonna take our first test shot right here and see if we can see the stars. Actually, I realized there's another little thing we're gonna go and fix. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna add a countdown here of three seconds. That's just gonna avoid that when we press the shutter button here uh, to get some shakings out of the camera. So we're gonna be even more stable right here. So we're simply gonna come here let it take the first shot. And here we go, we have our first shot. Next step here is gonna be putting some gloves on because it's freezing cold right here uh, with the wind and everything. And let's go see on the phone how the picture looks. Okay, so I have my phone right here and we're going to the DJI Mimo app. The reason I'm reviewing the picture here on my phone and not directly on the camera, is it's gonna be very hard on the camera to see if we can see any stars. And I wanna do a quick edit to see if we're able to recover some detail from the raw file or not. I also just realized the moon just disappeared. So that's gonna allow us to see even more stars inside the sky. So this is pretty exciting. It's gonna load our photos right here. And we're gonna click on the photo here. So we have the first picture here and we can see it's actually very bright. So if I try to zoom in, we can really zoom in here. So I might have to download the raw picture to analyze it a little bit more, but I do see that our composition is not perfect. So we might want to bring it up a little bit to uh, fix this. We're going to change the gimbal to just go up a little bit more. Um, we want to have the mountain mount hood centered here and we're going to go and take 
another test shot here. So we're gonna wait here. For this year, it's a lot of trial and error. So we're gonna take some few shots, test, see how they look, and then we're just gonna go through and test them. So if you come back and camera up here, look at our new shot. This composition is much better. You can see a lot more stars at the top. We're not gonna go inside of Lightroom. If you wanna use some other photo lighting apps, there's Photo Polar Editor, which is a great option that is completely free. And I'm gonna go inside of my gallery here, and you can actually see here on Lightroom. We can see the stars pretty well. They're nice and sharp. There's actually a lot of them in the sky. So up to now, pretty impressive what we're getting here. If we go on masking, I'm going to simply apply a quick mask to the sky. So we're going to use the mask right here to protect the sky. And we're going to go inside of our effects and apply some clarity to the sky. I won't go into too much details right here to explain how to edit the photos. I have much more in-depth videos about how to do that. But overall, this is the idea of how we would do it. So now it's gonna be time to go set up our time lapse. Now that we confirmed, you can see the stars pretty well inside of the camera. We're actually gonna go inside of our time lapse mode. So we're gonna come inside of the menu right here. We're gonna scroll to the complete end right here we're gonna go inside of time lapse and we're gonna swipe up here to not just do a time lapse i'm also going to want to do a motion lapse because this is so cool when the gimbal can turn around and take some pictures of the stars that are moving inside of the sky so we're going to come inside a motion lap right here we're going to go in the top right corner we're going to make sure that we have 4k and that we have our frame rate at 30 frames per second then we're going to go inside of custom motion down here and we're going to swipe up for more parameters so here our max shutter speed, we know it's about a one second. So you can take a shot probably every something like two uh, to five seconds. And I'm gonna wanna do it for about an hour here. So we're gonna set it to one hour, whoops. One hour and it tells us that you know, the video duration is maybe 24 seconds. If you wanna make it longer, we could come down here and we could put every three seconds. This is gonna give us a 40 second video in the output. So that's actually pretty good here. Uh, so now it's pretty easy with the DJI Pocket 2 to set this up. So we're gonna remove my previous points right here. And I'm gonna to wanna to start from the sky above. So we're gonna go high up inside of the sky. We're gonna set our first point, then we're gonna go down. Again, it's a little hard to see what is happening, but I actually look at gimbal here and try and see where is the gimbal to know what is going to be inside of the shot. So here we can set our second point right here. Actually, I just forgot some important things. We didn't check our manual settings here. Make sure that video format, we have video plus raw. This means it's going to take a video and also some raw pictures they're going to be able to process afterwards to get an even better time lapse. I highly suggest doing this if you're taking some time lapses with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. So now we're actually ready to start this time lapse. So I'm gonna press the button right here and we're gonna start capturing the time lapse. Uh, I'm gonna come back after once it's done because we won't wait an hour instead of the studio to see the result. So I'm gonna continue taking a few more time lapses using both of these cameras, but I wanted to know what you think about these. Uh, does one take better than the other one? Does a bigger sensor on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 compensate the fact that we have a slower shutter speed on it at only one second instead of eight seconds? I'm very curious to know what you think. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go around, take a few more of the shots to uh, make sure I can have a little bit more of the examples before the sun starts rising in just a few hours. Okay, so it's finally time to wrap up this video and based on what I've seen on the screen here, the DJI Osmo 3 can definitely take some pictures of the stars. Are they the best results you're ever going to get? No, probably not. It would be really nice for DJI to add an option to have a longer shutter speed. So for something at least like 10 seconds, 15 seconds would be even better, 20, 30 seconds would be ideal. Uh, but this is kind of a limitation on this camera. I'm not sure why they did this decision of keeping the shutter speed very low, uh, but this could allow us to get some much better 
better pictures of the stars because there's definitely a lot of potential inside of here but it's just that the fact that you cannot get as much light inside of it that's kind of limiting in it a little bit but i want to know what you think did you enjoy the results that we got from the dji Osmond awesome pocket free let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed the video please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for more content on photography and filmmaking see you in the next one